Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Balbul. I'm a dermatologist. I'm going to talk to you today about eczema and the causes for it. I, I want to give you a bit of an intro in the beginning. Uh, eczema is a condition that's very common and unfortunately becoming more so over uh, the last couple of decades, especially in uh, big cities. Eczema is a, a condition where the skin is red and itchy. Uh, depending on the severity of the eczema, one can have uh, scaling and crusting, like the skin is really broken and you can see uh, irregular skin surface, redness, uh, irritation, sometimes it actually weeps. The, the origin of the word of eczema comes from Greek for weeping skin, meaning that serum is coming through from underneath and uh, it can affect many parts of the body. Areas of the body that can be affected include the hands very commonly, but in young children it's often the flexures, the inside of the elbows and knees, and in older people, especially from overuse of uh, cleansers and medications, the face can be involved as well. There are two factors involved. One is uh, a damaged barrier that is likely, at least partially, on a genetic basis, and secondly, inflammation that takes place because the barrier is broken. And so our approach to eczema is always twofold. Are we, how can we repair the barrier? And secondly, uh, we have to treat the inflammation so that the process doesn't start feeding on itself and uh, stop the vicious cycle of the itch, scratch, itch, scratch. Alan is asking me about what's the difference between eczema and uh, atopic dermatitis. They are basically the same thing. They the different names for the same uh, condition in uh, uh, in Europe, they tend to like the term eczema better. In the United States, they like derma uh, dermatitis, atopic dermatitis better. Hi, Veronique. The, uh, you're asking me whether you have eczema. Obviously, I can't tell to, uh, from your letter, but it's important to show it to a health professional. And these are easy things uh, to figure out. Eczema is easily diagnosed by most, most physicians. You don't have to see a dermatologist. And certainly, if you go to the pharmacy, there are many creams that are available that will help your uh, eczema without having to uh, visit a doctor's office. Kevin asks uh, about the reason for eczema, or the medical word for it is etiology. Uh, it is a multifactorial condition. Certainly we have a barrier problem in the skin that causes uh, a disruption and things are able to get in that are otherwise irritating. Secondly, there is inflammation that we see that can result from this, but there's really also and abnorm an, um, an abnormality in the immune response that uh, can occur as well. Uh, so both these factors come into play in the majority of patients. Hi, Ellen. Uh, you're asking the toughest question, which is how do we get eczema? It is very, very difficult to answer that question. Probably the most important factor is genetics. So you can blame your parents. They, they, they gave you the, uh, the gene that predisposes you to eczema. The rest is up to you. If you keep your skin uh, well moisturized and not overly dry, then you probably won't get eczema. So uh, you got one strike against you from your parents, the second and third strikes are for you to prevent getting eczema and letting it progress. And Nick is asking me about uh, the causes for hand eczema, and certainly uh, hands are very much exposed to the environment, much more so than other parts of the body. Certainly there are occupational reasons we tend to uh, uh, do hobbies and garden and, and do other things with our hands and a major factor is are the chemicals that we are touching. Just as importantly though, the soaps, detergents, uh, astringents that we use in our hands tend to irritate the hands uh, severely and so we try and uh, protect our hands as much as possible. The best two ways are wearing gloves and using tools. Try and distance your hands from the activity that you're doing so your hands don't get so dirty. Jackie, the treatment of eczema is very frequently done with uh, uh, steroids, so it's a, an accepted part of the treatment. We are, uh, the steroids that we use are called topical or they apply to the skin, and uh, physicians know the strength and will advise you on how long to use it. Used as prescribed, they tend to be very safe. We have to say that eczema is very sensitive to topical steroids, and so we don't need to use very strong ones. Uh, but often it is a chronic condition and so you may end up using it intermittently for a long period of time. 
generally your doctor will assure you that it is quite safe and I would encourage you to follow the, the physician's advice. Uh, Trudy is asking me about uh, the use of oatmeal in baths. Uh, there seems to be something magical about colloidal oatmeal in the sense that it is able to uh, keep the skin more, more moist and, and uh, in better condition than just plain water. Uh, I really can't explain why, but I know a lot of my patients and many dermatologists recommend it. And it's something that if you're suffering with eczema and you, you like taking many uh, messy baths, then, then certainly you can try that. Uh, Kimberly asks me about uh, the use of bleach as a treatment for eczema. It really is not a treatment and it's something that I wouldn't recommend as a routine treatment, but very, very dilute uh, bleach solutions have an antiseptic effect. They tend to clean the skin, take off some of the crusts that are on the surface of the skin and have an effect sometimes uh, as a positive effect on, on eczema. So it's worthwhile trying once in a while, but again, on the advice of a physician, don't go out and try this on your own. Eczema can be prevented if we pay attention to the details, not to irritate the skin in the first place. Uh, we're living in a country that's cold and very dry in the winter, and so it's important to keep the skin from getting more irritated. We'd like to wear as much as possible cotton clothing rather than woolens and synthetics. And secondly, to take cooler showers and avoid as much as possible uh, things like uh, soaps, scrubs on the skin so that the barrier is protected Svetlana. And this way we can keep our skin from getting uh, irritated and hopefully obviating the need for uh, active treatment. We, we know that uh, eczema tends to be a chronic condition, uh, Kiko, and so uh, we have to have a mechanism to control it. And so part of this is keeping our barrier function uh, intact. We want to take cooler showers, we want to avoid irritating factors, certainly adding moisturizers to your daily regimen or perhaps a few times a week at least will tend to keep the eczema at bay better than, than uh, just uh, leaving it alone. So moisturizing some of the creams that are suggested by the Eczema Society of Canada uh, would be quite effective as an adjunct, as something positive for the treatment of uh, eczema. Hi B, uh, you're asking about food and uh, eczema and it's not really clear. Certainly we cannot give advice to everybody for any one food that can touch it. This is something that uh, dermatologists discuss at great length with their patients and Many patients see uh, allergies for that. It's very hard to predict on, on a, uh, bef before doing the testing as to whether, uh, one, whether foods are a factor, and two, even if we stop those foods, if your eczema will get better. So unless you're really convinced that there are foods that are affecting your eczema, try and eat a regular healthy diet. Megan, the bane of uh, eczema is the itch, and this is the hardest part to treat. Uh, certainly, if the itching is very severe, it can be disruptive to uh, your daily activities and even your sleep pattern, then it's worthwhile seeing a doctor about it. In the meantime, be nice to your skin. Uh, take cooler showers, don't scrub the skin too hard, wear clothing that's loose fitting, preferably made of cotton, and uh, use moisturizers whenever you can. But if you're suffering from it, it's a reason to go see a doctor, hopefully even a dermatologist. Lena, it's true that kids are very often affected by eczema. Uh, atopic dermatitis usually, or eczema, usually starts at the age of three or four months. So if, uh, uh, for babies that are younger than four months, I think it's worthwhile showing a doctor to make sure that it really is just regular eczema and not something else. Uh, and there are lots of treatment that are available that are very safe for young babies and children. And I suggest strongly that, that if he's suffering, it's not just him suffering, you're suffering with him, it's affecting your sleep pattern, his eating habits, and it's worthwhile going to see a physician, especially for, for young children. We got a couple of questions specifically from Anastasia and Sue about the seasonal variation of uh, uh, eczema. Certainly eczema seems to be worse in, in the winter, and. We always suspect it is the, the dry air, the, the cold conditions, but it's really the, also the clothing that uh, we wear in winter tends to be heavier and harder for our skin to adapt to. And so we'd like to continue, even in the winter, to wear lighter clothing, at least the first layer of clothes should be cotton, and two, to pay attention to not take showers that are too hot, that again tend to strip the skin 
and uh, then w we get to require uh, more uh, moisturizers. A fan is asking whether uh, eczema is caused by stress. I don't think it's caused by stress, but I think it's uh, exacerbated. It's made worse by stress. And anything that's going to make your skin warmer, that's going to make you more active, more anxious, will tend to make you uh, want to itch more, will tend to, to make uh, the eczema more miserable. So cool it, as we say.